Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. During a recent live stream, I did a segment on setting failsafe on OpenTX radios. And after that live stream was completed, several of the viewers said, man, you need to make that a standalone video. So what I decided to do rather than reshoot the entire video was just crop out the section that I did live. And I thought by showing you that, number one, you get a feel for what these live stream environments are like, which are kind of cool. And then number two, I thought the video pretty much covered what needed to be covered. So rather than go through and reshoot an entire video, I'm repurposing some material from a live stream. I'll also spend just a few minutes talking about a tool that I use called the Toolkit M8S. That little device is meant to be a charger, but it also does a lot of other things like measuring SBUS output. So I'll explain a little bit about the M8S before I get started, just so you understand how I'm doing the testing. At the end of the video, I won't conduct a wrap-up segment like I normally do. It'll just kind of taper off and end. I hope you like the video. If you do, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. Leave a comment and a thumbs up. And that's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is this Toolkit M8S. I'm telling you guys, this tool is a really nice tool to have. If you don't have this in your toolbox, save your money, get one. I'm, I'm just telling you, some of the things it can do are very handy. One of them, as you can see, is it's monitoring SBUS output. So I've got a little XSR, and by the way, it works with a crossfire. You just put a crossfire in SBUS mode, and it works just as well. Um, so you can see I've got the XSR is bound to my radio, right? And when I move, uh, and I have the XSR connected to the output port of the M8S, and I have the M8S, I'll back out of it so you can see it. And just so you, just so you can see how easy this is. So when you boot the M8S, this is what you get. Charger, measure, output, and settings. So you take the little scroll wheel here and you highlight the one that says measure, and then you click on it and you get an option to say, I wanna measure SBUS. And then you hit, you hit go. And that's it. So now what's going on is this monitor is showing you what's coming in on the channels, the SBUS channels for this radio. So if I move my throttle up, you'll see three go up and down, all right? Now the reason that's important is because when you're using SBUS, you can't really see this. If you have a servo, you can see it. If you're using PWM, you can see it. But with, with uh, SBUS, you just simply can't see it. You don't know what it's doing. That's why I like this tool so much, because you can plug it in and see instantly what's going on and what the, what the receiver in the plane is actually thinking it's supposed to be doing. So when you see me move my throttle, the receiver says, okay, I should be increasing the throttle to full. And you can see it's 2012 what is that microseconds but it's 2012 you can see it that's full throttle and if i back it down i come down to 989 by the way for those of you who use flight computers you can use this device with your outputs set up to manage your output range to from 1000 to 2000 if you're using a flight computer so think about it there's a lot of options here so i don't want to get too far into the m8s what i what i wanted to tell you guys is if you're using flight computers if you're using sbus if you want to do testing on failsafe, if you're using PPM, this tool is very useful in helping sort out what's happening on an SBUS receiver without having to invoke a computer and wondering, well, is the software on the computer working? It, you don't need to worry about that. This is a very simple device. Okay, so with that said, I, I want to show you, let me back out of this. I'm going to show you from the start screen. If you've never done failsafe, you can see I've got a model set failsafe testing. What I'm going to do is hit the model button and I'm going to scroll left and I'm going to go up to fail safe mode. And there are a couple of different modes that are available in OpenTX. I'm going to start with the one on the left. The first one is not set. Now, I think anyone that flies this radio knows don't leave it set there because first thing that means you don't have a fail safe set. And the second thing is every freaking time you turn on the radio, it's going to error out and say you don't have a fail safe set. So that's not the don't use it. What we do know about not set is that it sends no pulses. So if you use not set, it will send no pulses during a failure to the receiver. And whatever the receiver thinks is fail safe, that's what you're going to get. So highly advise against using not set. You do something. Okay. The next option is hold. Now let's demonstrate hold. All right. I want to show you guys what hold means. So I'm going to select hold and I'm going to click on the button. And now here's the first thing that we learned about failsafe. Maybe Link can pull his chart out and post it in the chat and you guys will be able to see it. In fact, let me, let me switch over. So if it does happen, you can see it in the video. 
All right, so hopefully Lynn will post his chart. But what we learned when you set fail safe options, those options get conveyed to the receiver multiple times during an active link. You know, there are different modes, get different time frames, but once you set hold, this receiver right now knows it's hold. That's all I had to do was go from not set to hold. And when I press enter, I guarantee you that receiver knows that it's fail safe is to hold. Now let's do a demonstration on, okay, one side set every nine seconds. Okay, so let's do a demonstration on what hold means. I'm gonna go back to the big camera. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. All right, so let's just say for argument's sake that in hold mode, I want my aileron all the way over to the side. Okay? All the way over to the side. So here's what I'm going to do. And you can see the meter. So look at the output on the M8S. You can see I've got my aileron all the way over to the side. So let's imagine I'm out flying. I've got my aileron all the way over to the side and I lose my radio. So I'm hitting power. The radio says, hey, it's still powered on. Do you want to do this? I'm going to say yes. Now watch what happens. I'm going to hit enter. The radio's off. I let go of the stick and look what it's doing. You see that aileron right there? It's holding that position. That's hold. Okay. So I don't know that that's a good option or a bad option. That's up to you. Right? You figure that out, but it holds. That's what it does. Now watch what happens when the, when the radio comes back. I'm going to hit power. It's going to boot back up. And as soon as I get that bind light, there. The hold is released because the, the stick is centered, okay? That's what happens. So that's hold. All right, I'm going to change from hold now to the next one, which is custom. This is the interesting one. So in custom, when you click on custom, you come in here to set, and you can see I've already got some things set. Um, what you want to pay attention to is you've got two different color bars. You've got a black bar and a red bar. The black bar is current state. The red bar is the fail safe state, okay? So you can see that the black bar is all the way over here on the throttle. It's all the way down. Now, if I move my throttle up, you see how that black bar is moving up to the red? I'm gonna try and not cover the screen so you guys can see it. Okay, so I'll keep moving it up, keep moving it up. There we go. Now you can see that I've got my throttle all the way at 100%. That matches the hold state last time I did custom. Let's just say for argument's sake that I want my throttle to be at, well, here's a good one. This is one of the things we learned. I didn't know this, and I do a lot of OpenTX. You guys know that. Let's say that I want my throttle to be 20%. I can come in here and set my throttle just by scrolling right here. I can scroll down. Let's say maybe 20% is a bad example to do live. We'll call it. We'll call it 60%. And, and that's not 60%, by the way. Um, it's 60. This is not percentage. This is this is just, remember, you got a scale of negative 100 to 0 to 100. So it's negative 100 to 100. 0 is 50%. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you're using a value less than 0, then you're going to have something less than 50% throttle, if that makes sense. The center line is your good, that's the indicator, right? That's the indicator of the halfway point. So let's say I want my throttle to be 73 or somewhere less than 50%. I can set it there. Now, here's the thing. I know I don't have to do anything else. From right now on, that throttle is set at 73 from, from this moment forward, unless I change it. Um, aileron, is that aileron? What is that? Oh no, that's not aileron. That's the mode switch. Okay, let's say I want the mode switch to be down. I just want to make a change, right? So if you want it to be down, you have to go, you have to highlight the field and then use the scroll dial to move to move it to the down position like that. All right. There's another thing that you can do. So if you want to change them individually or get very, very specific about the value, you can do it the way I'm showing you. You can go into failsafe, set, set it where you want it, and then when you, when you exit, that's it. That's your new failsafe. Okay? There's another thing that you can do, and that's that you can say, I want to go down to the bottom here. I'm going to put 
my mode switch into say return to home and I want my throttle at 80% and that's the way I want it to be. Then you can come down here to this option that says channels equals greater than fail safe and then you long press it. And when you do that, watch the red bars. They will match up to the black bars. Wherever the black bars are, they'll match up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this. There you go. Now see how the red bars matched up to black? That's my new fail safe. Now watch what happens on the screen. I think my uh I think my tool shut itself off for some reason. Mm. Um, I'm going to have to check my battery. Give me a second. Let me get a different battery. That doesn't seem right to me. I don't know what's going on there. Let's see. That's better. I guess the input voltage was too low. All right. I'll go back to measure. Back to S bus. There we go. Okay. So there's my fail safe. There's my fail safe condition. All right. I've set this fail safe values. And you can see on the radio right now, the only reason that they're is showing the same thing that I've got on failsafe is because that's where I have my my stuff right so I'll move it off there and turn the antenna that way okay so we've got our failsafe set I'm gonna go ahead and power the radio off and here's what I expect I expect this meter to reflect the red bars that you see on the radio this switch I'm gonna move the switch to something else right now I'm gonna move the throttle up there we go so there's something discrete when I turn it off I expect the I expect the toolkit M8S to reflect these red bars when I shut off. Now, keep in mind, I haven't done anything else. All I've done is go into the custom settings and set it. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and power off. It's going to complain that I'm still connected to a receiver. I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and shut down. And there you go. You see what's happening on the M8S? Those are the failsafe values that I set. All I had to do was spin the dial, and there it was. They're, they're set. Okay, so that's how you set custom. We'll power back on. Okay. And we're obviously we got our bind again because the controls went back and reflect the radio. All right. So that's custom. No other questions on custom. I'm going to move on to the, I think it's the last one. I'm going to look at no pulses. Oh, and receiver. Okay. So no pulses. That essentially is the same thing as no fail safe set so i'm going to set it for no pulses and i'm going to shut the radio off wait a minute i don't know if no pulses checks it didn't see i'm glad i looked there now it's now it's set so i'm going to turn the radio off now what i expect to happen is every one of these bars should go zooming over to the left that's what i expect to have happen there we go they all went zooming over to the left. So there we are. We're back into the radio. And of course, we've got our pulses back. Now look at the, now I think this is the last one. And the last one is receiver. So in the receiver mode, the way that works is that you're going to hold your controls where you want them. You say, I want these controls to look like this and this. And, and then I'll, I'll just, I'll move the aileron way over to the left. In fact, I'll do something screwy. There we go. That's a, that's a Christmas tree, right? So I'm just going to hit the fail safe button on the receiver couple lights blink, I'll let go, we'll power off, and we should expect to see that Christmas tree show up. And there we go. So that's failsafe. That is an absolute top-to-bottom look at the failsafe options on an OpenTX, and every single thing we just did was deterministic. It, was, it behaved exactly the way we believe it should behave. The thing that I would take away from this, if I were you guys, is that failsafe information is sent to the receiver not only once, but on a recurring basis. So if you make changes, it's sent to the receiver without going through a protocol. You don't have to reboot and rebind or any of that stuff. It is instantly sent over to the receiver. Okay? So that's it. That's it on failsafe. I want to just park this for the moment, and I'm going to turn off the battery, and then I'm going to look at the, the comments and see if there's anything else going on.